blessing. This is Pastor A.K. Parham. I'm a part of Missionary Baptist Church, and we welcome you into another Bible study tonight here at IAP, and we pray that your week is being blessed and God is continuing to cover your life as well as your family. And so let me start off with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, tonight. We thank you, God, for all that you've done and all that you're doing in each and every one of our lives. We give you glory tonight. We believe that you are our shepherd and we shall not want. And so, God, I pray that you continue to make the path plain for us. Give us the strength and, and in our areas of weakness, give us the rest and relaxation that we need to be able to get up and strive and to move and to run on, uh, to walk on through another day, giving you the glory and honor that you deserve. So bless God, your people. Bless this study tonight. I pray that it will be brought to fruition, God, according to your will. Bring clarity, direction, and correction right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And so we trust you tonight, God, and so deliver your word. Uh, make it plain to each and every one of us tonight. As we study and we glean together from the scriptures, let us continue to have holy and blessed fellowship one with another and your kingdom. We ask this humbly. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. We want to thank God. And also, uh, you, you, we want to invite you, amen, 7 o'clock on Wednesdays uh, here in, in, uh, in live inside the sanctuary. I'm a part. We're doing uh, what we call expository teaching where we are breaking down uh, a passage of scriptures right now we're dealing with the parables but this is inside the sanctuary live on wednesday seven o'clock and we break down a parable amen scripture by scripture line by line letter by letter word by word uh and and getting in the fruitful nuggets out of the historical context uh the cultural context of it as well as we're moving into uh what it, the scripture is saying in plain view and then we're also dissecting and going forward what does that mean into us in our today's context. And so we, we, we invite you to uh, come and be a part of that. This is goes on in conjunction uh, with what we do here online. And so uh, as we continue to move on, we're dealing with the right in righteousness, the right in righteousness. Uh, number one objectives with this is to recognize why righteousness is so crucial in the life of a believer. Number two, describe the difference between works of righteousness and righteousness by faith. And then number three, summarize biblical righteousness that God looks for in a believer. And I don't know about you, but I want to be right with God. I want to be right standing with God. And so when we talk about the biblical definition of righteousness, it comes a different um, thoughts comes to mind. And so just narrow it down just a little bit on our focus. Uh, it's an uh, action in regarding to the moral and biblical uh, law of God. And then we want to talk about living free and guilt free from sin, um, being, being able to um, walk in integrity and honesty before God and also to display the love of God in our life, and especially when in accordance to people that we deal with. <clears throat> morally right, you know, morally right, making um, just decisions, the right decisions, righteous decisions uh, based on our relationship with God. And all these are, are possible and they are achievable only through our trust and our belief in Christ. The only way we can please God is by having our faith in Christ. The Bible said without faith it's impossible to please him. And so we want to be able to please God and we understand that Jesus is the way. And so we want to be right and operate in righteousness while we here on earth on our way to glory. And so tonight when we're dealing with um, the I in righteousness, the I in in righteousness, and and we want to deal with that word called imputed, imputed. And so it's defined, imputed is defined um, as when you ascribe something to someone, uh, transferability uh, of a conviction or a cause onto somebody else's so subscribe and imputed in 
in just a lame and definition of the term, but as we flesh it out just a little bit for the clarity of our context in the religious and theological and scriptural as well as Christendom, Ram will will be speaking with imputed. What does that mean? And how does that affect our righteousness uh, and the ability to be righteous before God? Second God, Corinthians 5 and 21 in the English Standard Version, verse 21, for our sakes, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And it's talking about Christ. When we talk about imputed, uh, it meaning that Christ became sin for our sake so that we may be seen as righteousness through our faith in Christ. Uh, Romans 4, 21, um, it started with verse 21 in the King James Version, well, it's 21 through 24, and it says, being fully persuaded that he had promised he was able to perform, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone, that he was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. And so we thank God today that in order for us to be righteous before God, we have to be imputed by uh, the power of Christ. And Christ has take it on our sins so that we are able to stand before God being covered by his blood. The truth, the truth of the matter is that on our own, on our own efforts, we cannot possibly live perfectly before God our Father. No way you can do this on your own will. No way you can work out your own salvation but you need Jesus to make a way for you. You need Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, leading you and guiding you. See, sin, 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 sin so radically uh, affects our life. It affects us to the core, deep side, inside. And sometimes you're not even always conscious of the sin that is taking place in your life. But the way the sin came by, the first Adam, sin came into the world and affected all that would come after him, the human race. By the second Adam, sin was covered and dealt with by Jesus Christ. And so therefore, when we turn it over our lives over to Christ, then we become in right standing with God. Sin is, 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 it will affect our very core. But how many understand that when you place Jesus into your life on the inside, he knows how to clean up the core that is in your life and put you in the right place, in the right position, in the right standing with God. And so if we're going to be right with God, we need Jesus on our side. We need to be imputed uh, with the righteousness of Christ. How did Jesus do that? Theologians refer to as the active and passive obedience of Christ. Active obedience refers to Christ's life of sinless perfection. I may understand that Jesus knew no sin, but he took upon sin for each and every one of us. Everything he did was perfect. Everything Christ did was perfect. It was, he also was passive uh, obedience. It refers to Christ's submission to crucifixion. And you know, many of us, we read the Bible, we understood that when uh, Jesus said that uh, no man takes my life, but I lay it down. And cause Jesus understood what he was, what his mission was for humanity to save humanity, to take the sins of the world to the cross, hang them there, become sin for us. I uh, feel the rejection uh, that comes to sin by God the Father, but yet also being the scapegoat, sending our sins far away and dealing with the darkness that is covered by sin but when he was placed in the bar to me buried our sins far away and rose on, one, on this early one sunday morning old gospel preacher said with all power 
in his hand. And so in order to save our soul and then understand that while we're here on earth, we believe that one of these days he's coming back again. And so it's his submissive will and then the power of him being passive and obedient to the father, even unto the cross. He went willingly to the cross and allowed himself to be crucified. Isaiah 53 and 7. His passive obedience paid our sin debt before God. But his active obedience gives us the perfection that God requires. Not only uh, is Christ our righteousness imputed to us through our faith. It takes faith to receive it. But our sin is imputed to Christ. That is how Christ paid the sin debt for each and every one of us. The wages of sin was death, but the gift of God is eternal life. By having the righteousness of Christ imputed or attributed to us, we can be seen as sinless as Jesus is sinless. We are not righteous when ourselves. I need you to know that you, 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 you're not righteous. I'm not righteous. On our own merit, we're not righteous in ourselves. Rather, we possess Christ's righteousness that is applied to our account. It's not our perfection, but it's Christ that God sees when he brings us into fellowship with himself. We are sinners in practice. All of us are sinners saved by the grace of God. And it's wonderful how God's mercy works and how Yet we are sinners, but Jesus has covered us, taken our sins, been our intercessor so that we can be in right standing with the Father if we have faith in him. By the grace of God, God has declared us his righteous, standing before him in love and in the law because what Jesus did on Calvary. For each and every one of us. And so we can be in right standing because our sins have been imputed, ascribed to Christ. He took up on the sins of the whole world. And in that transference, the love of God allowed Jesus to cover us so that when he sees us, through our faith, our belief, and our trust in him, he sees his son. And that's why we thank God today through the power of his spirit. We are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus. So you want to be in the right standing with God. Give your life over to Christ because he was imputed. And thank God today because of that we can be right with God. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. We pray that you continue to further your studies, continue to seek out more scriptures that will verify the word of God that has just been sown in your life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask God as we are breaking just a tidbit of the nugget of your word to help those who are going deeper into their studies and their relationship with you that help them have a seed that is planted that will further their guidings and it will grow as a tree, an oak God strong in their life. I pray now that you continue to fill out the fruit in their life so that their life can bear much fruit for the kingdom. So continue to bless their life, continue to anoint them in every way. Continue to bless me as pastor and as a leader, we ask in God that you will have your way in our families, in our churches, in our communities. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and hope you see you next week.